Okay, so now let's come back to the peoples and awareness side. So Helen, I have a question for you. We hear a lot of OTID convergence, OTID collaborations, but how should we achieve OTID collaboration? Can you shed some light on this? Yeah, I think to minimize the gap between IT and OT to make, and to make these professionals to work together, uh, we can think about three things, organization, governance, and management. In terms of organization, I think everyone will agree that security is the most important thing to impact the operation, process, brand image, and even the reputation of a company. So security shouldn't be managed by just IT or OT. We suggest to have a top-down, company-wide, and independent unit to cover both IT and OT security. And for the aspect of governance, to make OT professionals understand the value of having security in their environment and support IT to lower the risk on OT sites is critical. So we think that to build a company, a corporate governance policy to make IT and OT work as a team uh, is critical. All steps in the team should build the foundation of OT manufacturing knowledge and IT security principles. We also suggest to have some training program to have IT and OT in to ensure the governance standards are implemented well. And the last part about management, uh, we think that to have IT and OT co-work on the connection on ERP, MES, or SCADA to, so that they can build strategy of security together and focus more on this heterogeneous system and network management. Um, basically, we built this kind of suggestion because we had seen the challenge of IT-OT collaboration today. Our global IT-OT convergence uh, survey shows that the majority of the respond uh, respondents, that's around 41% of the company, believe the technical, uh, technical responsibility of OT system security falls on OT and IT security issue belongs to IT. Only 27% of the company think IT and OT, they share joint responsibility to secure IT and OT uh, system. So I think this is really the situation companies do need to watch closely today. Okay, thank you, Helen. Um, basically, you mentioned a lot of very good points from what you see in the market, like the vague line between the responsibilities of ITs and OTs. And you mentioned that IDC suggests business owners to approach this from three uh, aspects. That is from organization, from governance, and also from management, right? Yeah. And also a dedicated team that has all the professionals would be the best thing to do. Yes. Okay. All right. So, Vera, what do you guys at Moxa see in the market? Are OT and IT personnel working hand in hand with each other? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great question and it's uh, very interesting to see how different companies approach uh, on the responsibility topic. And uh, I agree with the survey result that we actually see a lot of companies where they put IT in charge of the entire security. And uh, I, I also see that it's not really working well. And there are two factors why it's not working well. The first factor is that when IT is implementing some kind of new countermeasures or new policies to OT, and uh, OT would naturally resist to that kind of change because they don't really understand why they need to do it and they have their own concerns about the impact on their system. Okay, uh, and the second, uh, uh, second issue with this approach is that for IT people, it also feels you know, OT is something, you know, that we shouldn't touch. There are so many concerns and they are afraid to harm the system to cause operational downtime. And I witnessed several projects where so-called OT security actually ended on the industrial DMZ zone. So the whole project stopped after the industrial DMZ was built and they considered that the air gap is achieved again. So there is nothing else to handle. But in reality, of course, there are so many vectors inside the OT itself that could be exposed. So I totally agree that the best approach is when there is a dedicated cybersecurity team consists of both OT and IT professionals. And these people can learn from each other and then can, they can uh, leverage the best cybersecurity knowledge, probably coming from uh, IT and they also can evaluate the risk in OT when they implement any change. 
Yeah. And uh, regarding the third type of collaboration and responsibility definition, where there is a separate IT cybersecurity team and separate OT cybersecurity team, uh, I think it's a, it's a viable solution. It should work, but uh, I think the bottleneck, the major bottleneck is that there are not so many OT and experienced OT cybersecurity professionals on the market. So it would be a challenge to build a strong OT cybersecurity team. And uh, the downside again would be that those are two different teams. They wouldn't uh, learn from each other so effectively. So yeah, totally agree. Uh, one single team is the best, best approach. Got it. Thank you, Savir. So it seems like there is like an invisible wall between the IT and OT personnel as well. We hope that one day that invisible wall can be broken. So um, there's definitely a huge demand for um, OT cybersecurity professionals that you have just mentioned. And I'm pretty sure that the demand will continue to grow in the future. So now that we've talked about um, the trends in the market, we talked about OTIT convergence and also OTIT's collaboration. I think it was time we talk a little bit about some countermeasures, right? So over the past six months, we see a lot of headlines globally that's talking about ransomware attacks on infrastructures, on utilities, on OT businesses. So what is your take on this? Will this increase? Like, will it become more frequent in the future? If so, how should businesses take care of their business to protect them? We believe ransomware attack will be more severe than ever under the trend of smart manufacturing. For hackers, the encrypted currency currency actually bring the benefit for them from cyber attack. This aggravates the uh, ransomware incidents. We basically define OT cyber security as five stage, prevention, detection, mitigation, uh, response, and pre uh, predictions. Uh, for short term, we suggest the industrial enterprise can focus more on prevention and detection, such as leverage IDS, UTM solution to enhance the visibility and network cementation. In the meantime, to invest more on patch and the vulnerability management to secure the legacy system. And for long term, since we believe IT and OT will collaborate more, so it's important to build an integrated solution and up-to-date up to uh, threat intelligence, such as SIEM, SOC, and uh, threat intelligence platform. This is to support OT security team to easily monitor the security status and lower down the risk. Thank you, Helen. So, Severe, now can you walk us through one, will ransomware attacks increase in the future and to what should business owners do? Yeah, unfortunately, I have to admit that uh, we also believe the ransomware will have more impact on OT. And uh, yes, it is because of the trend of the digitalization and the convergence of OT and IT. So uh, the short answer is to build a proper cybersecurity. Yeah, it's a good answer, but it's uh, it requires a lot of investment. So uh, I think the, the question behind question is what to do when you have limited resources. So to prevent the ransomware uh, impact or to reduce it, uh, I would suggest to try doing the basic network segmentation at least because that would uh, prevent spreading of the issue. Uh, also trying to patch whatever is patchable. Um, and uh, of course, there should be some kind of disaster recovery plan mm -hmm. and uh, regular backups. So if it hits you, then you, you, you can at least restore. Okay, Severe, thank you very much. Now you just mentioned a few keywords. You mentioned network segmentation, also patch management and disaster recovery plans. Can you please shed some light on the solutions or services that you see in the industrial cybersecurity market right now? Yeah, uh, we, we have our own view on the cybersecurity solutions uh, and, and the way we represent uh, what, what vendors are usually have to offer is slightly different. We don't define it into different stages. Rather, we try to map those products or solutions to the Purdue model. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually we focus only on the levels one to three. This is where OT belongs because we mostly deal with OT, um, yeah, OT people. 
So uh, the way I personally like to uh, explain uh, cybersecurity solutions is uh, through these four layers. So uh, the first layer of cybersecurity solution in OT would be the host protection. And uh, here it could be anything starting from proper configuration of the host or device and uh, of course patching it. And uh, um, it could be improved with uh, additional software-based countermeasures like anti-malware, antivirus, uh, OT grade, that's important. Uh, or it could be a hardware-based countermeasure. Uh, usually it's like a IPS or a transparent firewall, which is put in front of the critical asset. So this is how we can protect the hosts. And the second layer would be to protect the network access. And usually that relies on the functionality which is built in into the modern industrial Ethernet switches. Something like ACL, port security and so on. Uh, the third layer would be about the segmentation. And here uh, I put all the products related to, you know, uh, network segmentation um, technologies like uh, firewalls, mm -hmm. like uh, VPN routers. Some customers, they still need remote access and that has to be secure. So those kind of products and, and data dials. Mm -hmm. So all those products, they help you to build the segmentation in the network. And finally, the fourth layer is more related to the software and to holistic management of security uh, for the whole site. So uh, I would put IDS over there, uh, security management, policy, centralized policy management, those kind of software. So this is how we see uh, the holistic OT cybersecurity portfolio and uh, we believe it's a little bit easier to understand when you can actually show people where those products are implemented in their system. Okay, thank you, Savir. So basically, you mentioned a lot of critical points in your talk over there. Um, you mentioned a very, very good one that is a very secure remote access, especially during the new normal. I believe secure remote access can benefit a lot of uh, different companies at this time.